Hi, I'm Sandata Yet Villarreal Jr. Welcome to Video Assisted Instruction Computer Programming 3 Series. Right now, we are in our Lecture 4 of Week 1 to 4. Now, let's proceed to our topic for today. By the way, our topic is the continuation of uh, Lecture 3, which is Flowchart. And right now, we're going to discuss how flowchart used in other fields. We have here listed, first, it documents and analyzes a process. Number two, it standardizes a process for efficiency and quality. Third, communicate a process for training or understanding by other parts of the organization. And last, we have to identify bottleneck redundancy and unnecessary steps in a process and improve it. Next slide we have, in education, it plan coursework and academic requirements. It also create a lesson plan or oral presentation. And the last, it organize a group of individual projects. In the field of sales and marketing, it plot out the flow of the survey. It also chart a sales process. And the last, it plan a research strategy. In the field of business, it understand order and procurement process. It also represents an employee's task and daily routine. And the last, it understands the path that user takes on a website or in a store. In the field of manufacturing, flowchart denotes the physical or chemical makeup of the product. It also illustrates the manufacturing process from the beginning to end. Flowcharts for computer algorithm as a visual representation of data flow, flowchart is useful in writing a program or algorithm and explaining it to others or collaborating it with them on it. You can use a flowchart to spell out the logic behind a program before ever starting to code the automated. More specifically, flowcharts can demonstrate the way code is organized and it visualizes the execution of code within a program. It also shows the structure of a website or application. And the last, it understands how users navigate a program. There are also related diagrams used in computer software. It includes, number one, UML or Unified Modeling Language. Number two, the Nazi Snyder Man. And number three, the Dracon Charts. All of these are used in developing a program. So we have here in figure 6 shows the example and uses of algorithm through flowchart. So right here on the left side we have the start read A, read B, calculate sum as A plus B, print sum and end. What they called answers the question of find the sum of 529 and 256. So the value of that we have start a is equals to 529, B is equals to 256, sum 529 plus 256, then the sum is 785, and that's the end. Data processing identifies as the data is a collection of facts, unorganized but able to be organized into a useful information. Information is data arranged in an order and form that is useful to the people who receive it. Data processing is a process of actions or operations that converts data into a useful information. A data processing system includes resources such as people, procedures, and devices used to process input data for producing desirable output data processing. In figure 7 shows data storage hierarchy in data processing. The level 5 identifies that it is a database and you will notice that the direction from the top going to the bottom. So let's start with level 0 which is a bit a single binary digit 0 and 1. It itemizes you have a single character. Level 1 character. Multiple related bits are combined to form a character or what you call a byte or maybe we can understand clearly this that this is considered to be a word because a combination of a bits is considered to be a word level 2 fill 
multiple related characters are combined to form a field. That is true. Now, level 3 record, multiple related fields are combined to form a record. Or, it's better, multiple words combined together it is considered to be a record. Next, we have level 4 file. Multiple related records are combined to form a file. That is true. And the last, we have level 5 database. Multiple related files are integrated to form a database. Now, let's move on to the standard method of organizing data. So, we have two, file-oriented approach and database-oriented approach. The file-oriented approach, application data is organized into one or more files and application program processes them to generate the desired output. An example of this is Microsoft Excel or Spreadsheet or OpenOffice.com. So those are file-oriented approach. And even right now on the government, they are using also this until right now, the Spreadsheet or Excel. The second one is the database-oriented approach. The data from the multiple related files are integrated together to form a database. And this is more applicable right now. And uh, after this, we can identify the advantages of using a database-oriented approach. That's why we're discussing that the database is considered to be the backbone of all programming languages. Now we have here the database-oriented approach advantages. This is something like you're using a database in your program. It provides greater query flexibility, reduces data redundancy. It solves data integrity or inconsistency problem. It makes data independent of the application programs. And it includes data security features at database level, record, and field level. So those are the advantages of using the database. And you will notice all of the problem is listed. Actually, in manual operation, these five advantages of using a database is the disadvantage of the manual-oriented approach. Now, let's move on to the structured flowcharting. A flowchart is a graphical representation of an algorithm. And since this is COBOL, you cannot use any other flowchart, but you're going to use a structured flowchart because COBOL is a structured programming. Okay, so there are programming that is not structured. Okay, uh, it could be modular, it could be uh, sequential. So those are example of uh, programming we have right now. And this is structured which is been used on the early age of uh, programming now we have six structured flowcharting number one sequence number two if else number three while loop four do while five for loop and six case switch so this structured uh, programming goes also to structured flowcharting. So we can check this out. In figure 8 shows the example of sequence structure. So this is what you call the sequence. Okay? Sequence in a manner of direction. Another is similarity. That's why it's called sequence. Next, figure 9 shows the example of if-else structure. So if-else is something like a decision. If true, then you can go right here. If false, you can go right here. Else, else you can go back. Okay? That is the idea. Next, in figure 10 shows the example of while loop structure or while loop programming. So, in while loop, we're going to make a procedure here. Maybe a function. If it is true, then it will go to the process and it will go back again. If true, Go to the process again, it will go back again. So an example of this is increment. For example, the increment of uh, 5 is up to 10. So we have until they are not finished with 10, it will not go to false. Okay, So that is the example of while loop. Next in figure 11 shows the example of do while structure. So it goes right here and gives the function or formula. So you need to identify do this. If true, then go back again. If true again, then go back again. As long as it's true, it go back. It goes back to the beginning. 
then if it is false it will exit that is the idea of the while and I use this in a menu especially in a menu okay if you want to go out with anything you press on the keyboard do while is the best thing uh, in terms of programming next in figure 12 shows the example of loop structure so loop structure is something like it will go back and go back again until they are not met the necessary uh, output and it is also used in something like uh, creating of uh, viruses there are plenty of loops there in terms of generation or generating file that they're going to hide if you code uh, the hidden file to hide then it is considered to be a virus okay uh, that's the idea right here so loop is something like a long process for example you're going to display a number 0 to 1 million then it will go back and go back again until it goes to 1 million and then it goes to false that's the idea of loop structure in figure 13 shows the example of case switch structure I use this on uh, program like uh, uh, birthday identification or celebrants another is uh, by using uh, date calendar so case switch is the best uh, structure if you want to create something like january february march april if month is equals to one then that is january if false it goes to two then that is february that is the idea so case switch i use this in date uh, month year something like that okay so congratulations you successfully finished our lecture four thank you and good luck